you told me you already had this part. That was a lie. I've been waiting for you my whole life. At the beginning of the movie, the host of the Lost Dimension show introduces the upcoming episode, teasing that a visitor will appear, but questions whether this visitor will be in human form. Afterward, we are introduced to Clayton, a struggling actor, as he auditions for a role. Although the judges appreciate his performance, they ultimately decide not to select him for the part. As Clayton exits the audition room, he encounters Donald, and to his dismay, he learns that Donald secured the role through his connections. Later, Clayton receives a call from his friend Scene, who excitedly informs him that he spoke to the director from Psychic Highway, and they want him to come back for a callback audition on Monday. Clayton decides to place an ad on the front page, seeking to meet a demonologist as he is conducting research for a role. The next morning, Clayton receives a call from a demonologist named Eliza, who saw his ad on the internet. He promptly goes to meet her, where Eliza warmly welcomes him. Clayton notices several paintings on the wall and inquires about them. Eliza explains that they are based on a 15th century wood carving, depicting various forms of demons. She then tells him about Galvino, the demon of desire. Next, she invites him to take a seat and kindly offers to make coffee for him. As Clayton waits outside, we observe Eliza quietly chanting some spells over his coffee. She then comes out with the coffee, but as Clayton takes a sip, his mouth burns, causing him to drop the cup from his hand. Eliza reassures him that it's okay and offers him her own cup of coffee instead. He apologizes to her for the mishap, but she reassures him that everything is fine, mentioning that apologizing is a sign of weakness. She then prompts him to share about his career, to which Clayton tells her that he has been acting for almost 15 years, but hasn't landed many significant roles in movies. Elisa then inquires about his family, but Clayton says he feels like he should be the one asking the questions, because he's there to learn about what she does. Elisa then emphasizes the importance of trust for the work they are about to do together. She explains that for their ritual to have any chance of success, they both need to trust each other completely, with no room for mistrust in the house. She then observes that Clayton experiences a significant amount of self-doubt, which hasn't always been the case. Eliza senses that something must have happened to him, leaving him extremely vulnerable. She suggests that evil spirits may have infiltrated his soul, and she believes that Clayton can feel their presence, because as they have grown stronger, he has felt increasingly powerless, and they will continue to do this until there is very little Clayton left. Perplexed, he asks what happens next, to which Eliza says that not going to happen because the ritual they will perform is an expulsion of evil spirits. She reassures him that it's like purifying his body and mind, ensuring he will leave with clarity and a heightened awareness of the spirits around them, and that there's no better preparation for his role as a demonologist. Clayton agrees, and she leads him to the attic, explaining that they'll perform the ritual there, but she needs a day to prepare him, so they will perform it tomorrow night. He notices blood there, to which she tells him that it's human and goat's blood. Following this, during their meal, Clayton jokingly makes a comment that Eliza finds displeasing. She says she is not sure this is going to work, as she is not certain that he will be able to silence the preconceived notions and doubts that obviously concern him. Clayton shows his desperation to get this role, to which Eliza says on the phone he told her he already had this part, and that was a lie. Clayton admits it, to which she says lies are the work of the demons, and they convince them that they should disguise their insecurities. But in reality, they are leading them further from who they truly are. Clayton tells her he has a callback on Monday, and he need to be great, or else they are going to give the role to social climber Donald. Eliza asks if he feels jealous of Donald, to which he responds that they both attend the same acting class, and Donald is simply one of those individuals who have been fortunate. He explains Donald did a commercial when he was two years old, and it aired on TV every Christmas for eight years. Eliza says Donald is on his path, and Clayton will eventually find his as well. She then asks whether he believes anything she's telling him, to which he says he believes her. But it's just all of this is so new to him. Elisa expresses that it is very difficult to gain clarity in the current era, 
with media, science, and social norms often presenting contradictory and uncertain information. This is why she chooses to live in a remote location, rarely using the internet or phone, as exposure to such sources can inflict significant psychological trauma, allowing the evil spirits to take hold. Meanwhile, Donald is seen with his friends Nikki and Petra, and he inquires about their belief in paranormal phenomena. Nick responds that she doesn't believe, to which Donald counters that he does, because he's set to portray a demonologist. He informs them that he received a callback for the movie Psychic Highway on Monday, and since he's confident the role is practically his, he's already in preparation mode. On the other hand, Clayton watches a video of Donald announcing his upcoming spiritual journey with his friend Nikki. Just then, Elisa asks him if he has everything he needs, to which he says yes. Noticing the phone in his hand, she remarks that it's a distraction and only brings feelings of jealousy and despair. Though Clayton suggests he can turn it off, she requests him to hand it over to her instead. After some time, Clayton notices a closet adjoining his room, within which a TV is operating. He discovers some old tapes there, and upon playing one of them, he begins to watch TV and it turns out to be an episode of Eliza's show, The Lost Dimension. Clayton gets shocked when he realizes that Eliza is talking about him in that video, and then suddenly some sound distracts him. He goes out to investigate and is startled to find Eliza sitting in front of a mirror, chanting something, and she has a strange mark visible on her back. And as he realizes she is turning around, he quickly steps aside. The scene shifts to Donald, who informs Nikki that he's going to ask her a series of questions and he wants her to respond with the first thing that comes to her mind. Nikki suggests that after answering each question, they both take a shot, and he agrees to it. Afterward, he begins asking her some frivolous questions, to which Nikki responds jokingly. However, as Petra starts to become bored, she requests them to stop, prompting Donald to abruptly shout at her, demanding that she keep quiet. He then retrieves a photo of Nikki's parents and confronts her, asking what truly happened to them. Donald suggests that her father shot her mother before hanging himself, questioning if her father was possessed. Nikki becomes visibly angry at his insensitive probing and demands that he keep quiet. When Donald persists, Nikki becomes increasingly agitated, grabbing a nearby bottle and smashing it. She accuses him of prying into her personal life for his insignificant film that no one will ever see. She asserts that he won't even land the role, and in frustration, reveals that her father murdered her mother because she cheated on him. Before taking his own life, Donald becomes terrified and begins apologizing profusely to Nikki. However, Nikki suddenly reveals that she was only acting, causing Donald to be taken aback by the unexpected turn of events. The next day, Clayton asks Eliza about her TV career. She recounts, hosting one of the first female-led ghost hunting reality TV shows on network television in the year 2000. However, it lasted only half a season and received numerous negative reviews, leading to its cancellation. And when Clayton asks if she ever feels the urge to return to acting, she says no. She then tells him about the Malum Extractum, the preeminent text for summoning and extracting spirits, and she has an original manuscript. Following this, while preparing Clayton for the ritual, Eliza instructs him to reflect on his life and then prompts him to recount the worst day of his life. Clayton hesitantly reveals that he once called his mom a bitch. Eliza asks him, where are his parents now? To which Clayton reveals that his mother left him and his father is now in Miami with his boy toy Max. She asks him if he telling her the truth about his mother. Clayton then discloses the heartbreaking truth that he was responsible for a car accident that resulted in his mother's death. Overwhelmed with guilt and sorrow, he breaks down in tears, expressing how his mother was his best friend, prompting Eliza to offer her consolation, trying to provide comfort in this moment of intense emotional turmoil. She then informs him that it's time to perform the ritual and explains that blood magic is crucial for summoning a demon. When Clayton asks how much blood they need, she reassures him that they won't be using his blood. Afterward, she leads him to a room where a goat is present, and handing him a knife, she instructs him to focus on thoughts of his mother, Donald, and all his past failures. Following this, she emphasizes the importance of keeping his eyes closed during the ritual. And once they begin, it's very important that neither of them leave the house, because if the spirits escaped whilst they are in the process of summoning them, 
they have no idea what havoc they will create. She then tells him that his mind has been possessed by evil spirits. As she stand here before him, she addressed the spirits that have corrupted his every thought and desire. She then asks the spirits inside of Clayton, does they hear her? Clayton gets startled as he opens his eyes, to which she reassures him that they are engaged in an ancient ritual, but Clayton, overcome with fear, rushes to his room and prepares to leave. Eliza follows him into his room and remarks that perhaps this is why he fails to secure the roles he desires. Clayton protests, claiming she just tried to stab him, to which she explains that her actions were part of the ancient ritual, serving as a form of intimidation intended to draw out the evil spirits. Despite Eliza's numerous attempts to convince him, Clayton begins to leave, but he pauses upon hearing Eliza singing the song that his mother used to sing to him. He asks her why she was singing that song, to which she responds that she knows deep down he believes. She then suggests making some tea for them while he takes a bath in the meantime. Clayton agrees and decides not to leave, and Eliza remarks that she doesn't see him returning to his old life after all of this. She then asks him what excites him, to which he responds that he doesn't know. Eliza then confesses that death excites her, prompting Clayton to question why she hasn't taken her own life. She explains that she has been planning her exit into hell for a long time, and the last thing she wants to do is waste it on a simple suicide. Clayton expresses his desire to become a movie star, citing it as a form of validation, proof that he was right all along. Eliza questions why he seeks validation from others, to which Clayton explains that it's not just for himself, but also to prove wrong all those who doubted him. Eliza gets up, applauding for Clayton, but then questions, who cares? To which he says he do. Eliza asks if seeing Donald makes him want to punch him in the face every time. Clayton responds that he wants to cut Donald's head off with a buzzsaw and toss it in the dumpster. Eliza advises him that if he lets go of all that anger and resentment, Donald won't matter anymore, and the only thing that truly matters is himself. Clayton expresses his determination, stating that his mother believed he would succeed, so he is going to make it. Eliza offers him comfort, but shortly after, Clayton is startled by the sound of his mother's voice. Terrified, he attempts to flee, but his hand is burnt by the door handle, and soon he realizes that he is trapped in the house. Frustrated and panicked, he angrily confronts Eliza and tries to strangle her, and she provocatively urges him to go ahead and kill her. However, just as Clayton sees his mother instead of Eliza, he stops and helps her to her feet. She leads him back to the ritual room and restrains him with chains. Her mother then leaves there, and after a while, when Eliza approaches him, he asks where is her mother. Eliza cryptically responds that her mother is right there. Clayton then asks her what she wants from him, to which Eliza admits that she has been thinking his words and realizes she does want more out of life, and confesses that she always wanted a son. She proceeds to light a torch and heat a branding iron with it, and afterward, she advances toward him and marks it on his stomach. Clayton now realizes that it was a trap, and Eliza continues the ritual by pouring blood on him. Next, we witness Clayton lying paralyzed on the bed as Eliza expresses her desire for him to call her mom. Reluctantly, he addresses her as such, and upon hearing this, Eliza is visibly pleased. However, her demeanor quickly changes as she gets up and begins pouring gasoline on him from a can. Terrified, Clayton attempts to escape from Eliza by crawling away. However, Eliza swiftly appears in front of him, and to his horror, he watches as she peels the skin from her face, revealing her demonic visage beneath. With a sudden, forceful movement, she jumps on him, and then makes physical contact with him. And then, she sets herself on fire, engulfing both herself and Clayton in flames. The scene shifts to Donald auditioning for the role of demonologist. When he inquires about the shooting location, the casting team informs him that they will contact him. But when Donald leaves the audition room, the team discusses that his performance was awful. Next, it is Clayton's turn to audition, but he fails to show up. Despite his absence, the team acknowledges that they liked him and speculates that he might have landed the role if he had attended. Thanks for facing the frights with us. If you survived this video, drop a like, summon that subscribe button, and brace yourself for more horror. Until next time, 
Stay spooked.